um, cessation of all sufferings, when you realize I am that pure consciousness. How does it work? If I know that I am the witness consciousness, how does it uh, help me to transcend pain? How does it cure the, the suffering caused by the second arrow? One way, three ways of looking at it. One way is the very nature of consciousness. Consider light. It's like light. Prakasha Swarupa. Light, Prakasha in Sanskrit means illumination or light. It illumines everything, but it is not affected by the things it illumines. It can illumine the water there. So much water, the light, sunlight falls on it and reveals it to you. But the sunlight doesn't become wet because of the water. It can reveal the terrible fires burning in, in uh, Australia. But the sunlight, the light is not affected by the fires. It can reveal something very dirty, maybe uh, water in a drain. It can reveal the pure water of the Ganges. But the light itself doesn't, is not made impure by the water in the drain. It's not made pure by the water in the Ganges. No, it is not affected by, by what it reveals. Consciousness is like light. I'm not saying consciousness is suddenly start glowing when you become enlightened. I mean, you may look, you know, your face may glow, but that's a different kind of glow, not, not like uh, glowing in the dark radium or something like that. So that uh, consciousness, it illumines. And what it illumines, it's not affected by it. If there is a pain in the body, it illumines, it reveals there's a pain in the body. But the enlightened person will not say, I am in pain. I am the witness of a pain in the body. You may say that's a, that's a strange way of looking at it. It's not strange. It's, act, it's, a, it's the actual fact. What we do normally is, we do not think of ourselves as consciousness. We think of ourselves as this. And the moment there is a pain here, ouch, I am in pain. Here is a pain and I am this. So I am in pain. Depression, unhappiness. Oh, I am so unhappy. Are you isn't it that you are aware of this deep, deeply unhappy feeling arising in the mind? Yes. Before this it was there, after this it will not be there. You, the consciousness, are you unhappy or are you aware of unhappiness? You are aware of unhappiness. But you and your, yourself, the awareness is not unhappy. So, because your nature is like light, when we, in the evening when we do the arati here, the last thing the Swami chants is, Natatra Suryo Bhati Na Chandra Tarakam. It's a beautiful mantra from the Katopanishad. Um, that is not illumined by the sun. There the moon does not shine, nor lightning. What to speak of this mortal fire? Tameva Bhanta Manubhati Sarvam. That shining, everything else shines. Tasya Bhasa Sarvam Idam Vibhati. By its light, all that is here is, is lit up. That shining means you shining. Everything else shines. Everything else shines means your mind, first of all, your mind is lit up. Then through the mind, the body and the sense organs are lit up. And through this body-mind, you light up the entire world and you experience the world. But you shining, everything else shines afterwards. By your light, everything in this universe is lit up. Swami, you are saying nice things about me, but isn't a bit too much by my light? No, there are so many lights here. True. Close your eyes. Where are all those lights? They are lights only when you see them. And your seeing is also there only because your mind is behind your eyes. And your mind also works because you, the consciousness, are lighting up the mind. It's worth thinking about. Your nature is like consci is consciousness, is like light. That's one reason why you are not affected by the things that you illumine. Just as light is not affected by the things it illumines, you are not affected by the things you illumine. Another reason why you are not, another way of looking at it, how do you transcend suffering? Asanga. You are not, nothing sticks to you. I mentioned it yesterday. Nothing sticks to you. When you reveal something, it does not stick to you. Whether it's a person, an object, a place, an experience, a, a pain, a, a, a pleasure, a taste, a smell, a touch, um, something you see or hear, none of them stick to you. They come and go. You shine. So even the worst of suffering does not stick to you. And if it does not stick to you, it has no relationship with you. It only appears, dances in your light and disappears. When it comes, you can say hello. If it's a pain, you can't say really say welcome. It would not be very honest. But you can at least say hello. There you are again. It will stay for some time and it will disappear and go. All right, let, let it go. You are asanga, unattached. To what? To anything in this world. That is another reason why your nature transcends pain. Another reason why 
The third one, how you transcend pain, Satya Mithya. The reality is not affected by the appearance. The rope does not become poisonous because you imagine it, mistake it to be a snake. The desert does not become wet because the, you know, the mirage water appears there. Shankaracharya says, all the water in the mirage is not enough to wet one grain of sand in the desert. That which is false cannot affect that which is real. This entire world, what is the world? Waking world, dream world and deep sleep. None of it affects you, the witness consciousness, because it is not of the same order of reality which you are. In Vedanta, you are Paramarthika reality, the absolute reality. And this world is called Vyavaharika, transactional reality. It appears, shines and disappears in your light. It cannot affect you. The false cannot affect the real. You say, no, Swami, people are traumatized by suffering. What is traumatized? The mind. The mind is traumatized. But you are the witness of the pre-traumatized mind and the traumatized mind. And in between the traumatized mind, there will be gaps and you are not aware of the trauma. And then when the traumatized mind goes to sleep, you are aware of the, the absolute blankness and peacefulness of the resting mind. When it wakes up, it may again remember the trauma. It wakes up suddenly aware. Oh, I am traumatized, supposed to be horrible, I am in trauma, oh, I am horrible. Then it starts working again. But you, the consciousness, you are not traumatized. You never were. So, because, because you are uh, like light, therefore you are not affected by suffering. Because you are unattached, asanga, therefore you are not affected by suffering. Because you are real and the suffering body, mind are appearances in you, therefore you are not affected by suffering. Ishana, Prabhu Rabdhyaya. So these words which are used, Ishana normally refers to God. Prabhu is another word which refers to God. But in this case, it refers to the theory of the pure consciousness, which we are. Shankaracharya comments, here the Lord means that one which is beyond all suffering. Because you are beyond all suffering, therefore you are the Lord, the fourth pure consciousness. Prabhu also here refers not to God, but to you, the pure consciousness. Abhyaya, each of these words, very deep. Abhyaya means unchanging. So traditionally there are six kinds of changes talked about. Shadavikar or six modifications, six kinds of changes. One is Jayate, birth. So we are born, the body is born. And having been born now comes into existence. What was not there, I did not exist as this person, as this body. Now I exist as this person. That's another change. Jayate Asti. So second change is, I come into being as this, after being born. Third is Vardhate, I develop, baby and child and teenager, I am developing, growing, the body is growing and changing. The next change is Viparinamati, it re reaches a plateau of development, middle age and you continue at that level. And then begins Apakshiyate, deterioration, inevitable. I am sorry but inevitable, no matter how much, uh, if you do a lot of Hatha Yoga and gluten free, then the, it, it, will be, it will be managed, it will be managed. Uh, the decline will be a managed decline, which is good. Common sense decline, you should do that. If you have a car, why will you not take care of it? If you don't take care of it, it will fall apart faster. But you, we cannot stop it. Nobody can stop it. Old age will come. That which seemed effortless when you are young, did not take any maintenance. Now this, you can still have the same thing, but it takes a lot of maintenance, a lot of work. One doctor said, uh, Swami, now with the latest modern technology in medicine, we can almost guarantee that you will live long, but we cannot guarantee you will live well. <laughs> so, an inevitable decline comes, apakshiyate, and finally death. Inevitable, for all that is born, death is certain. So, nashyati, six changes. And it says, this consciousness, the fourth, is free of all of these six changes. It does, it's not born. It's not that it was, did not exist and comes into existence. It's not that it develops. The body develops. The mind matures. But this consciousness, it does, it's not that it develops. It's always the constant shining light, like that. Um, it's not that it matures. It's not that it deteriorates and not that it dies.